Is there any truth to the idea that EVs are so heavy that they're destroying public roads? Let's take a look. So the story is that electric vehicles, because of the weight of their batteries, weigh so much that they cause more damage to public roadways than internal combustion engine vehicles. But is there any truth to that? Or is it possible that electric vehicles are actually easier on the roads uh, that we drive on? So first let's talk about the actual weight of the cars. The average weight of a passenger vehicle, of an internal combustion engine passenger vehicle, according to the EPA, is 4,100 pounds. If we look at the most popular electric vehicle on American roadways, the Tesla Model Y, it's 4,416 pounds. So it's heavier by 300 pounds. Now there were 385,900 of those Tesla Model Ys sold in 2023, according to a recent update that I read in Car and Driver on the best-selling vehicles in, in the United States. So yes, EVs are a little bit heavier, but how much more damage is the extra 300 and, what was it, 316 pounds going to cause? That to me is, you know, any car can do that just by carrying a couple of extra passengers. So I don't think it's gonna be much. Most of the vehicles that are caused damage are gonna be considerably heavier. Now for our personal experience, I traded in a 2013 Ford F-150 that is showing to have a weight of 5,128 pounds for a Chevy Bolt EV with a weight of 3,624. Yes, it's apples to oranges comparing a full-size truck to a Chevy Bolt, but the, I personally took down the weight of my vehicle quite a bit. Rachel's daily driver was a 2019 Subaru Crosstrek that weighs in at 3,239 pounds, and now her daily driver is a Fiat 500e that weighs 2,980. So again, we went down in weight. I even did that on the motorcycle going from a full-size bagger Indian Challenger to the Harley-Davidson Livewire. Again, they're apples to oranges, but the electric vehicles that we're driving weigh less than the vehicles we were driving before. Is it true that uh, EVs are, are heavier? Yeah. Let's look at an apples to apples weight comparison. You can't get much more similar to each other than the Kia Niro. The Kia Niro has an internal combustion engine variant and an EV variant. The ICE Kia Niro is 3,071 pounds the Kia Niro EV, 3,803. So there it's a little bit more than just a couple of passengers. So it is a little bit more weight, but that little bit more weight isn't going to do the damage to the roads that people think. The heavyweight vehicles like commercial vehicles, commercial trucks, 18 wheelers, those loads are what can really damage the roads exponentially more than a passenger vehicle that weighs maybe three to 700 pounds more than something else. Behind that, I'll go with what the top three selling vehicles are in the United States right now, according to that article from Car and Driver. The number one uh, best-selling vehicle is a Ford F-150, which has a weight range of 4,275 to 5,000 uh, 757, uh, considerably more than the Model Y. The number two best-selling vehicle is the Chevy Silverado with weights between 4,410 and to 5,710. And then the third best-selling vehicle is the Dodge Ram with a weight of 4,765 up to 6,440. All three of those can weigh more than the best-selling EV of the Tesla Model Y. Currently, according to a report from Experian, there are 1.7 million electric vehicles total registered in the United States. Well, let's just look at those three trucks. The F-150 sold 750,789 units according to that article in Car and Driver. The Chevy Silverado sold 543,219, and the Dodge Ram sold 40, 444,926 for a total of 1,738,934, 1.7 million. So total number of EVs compared to the total number of F-150s, Silverados, and Dodge Rams sold in 2023 is about the same and the average weight of those trucks is greater than the weight of a Model Y. It's greater than the weight of the Chevy Bolt. It's greater than the weight of the Fiat 500e. 
how much damage are those pickup trucks doing to the roads? Uh, let's look at a, the best-selling non-truck, the Toyota RAV4. According to uh, Car and Driver, it sold 434,943, and it weighs between 3,370 and 3,640. The weights are the weights are kind of close, and some states charge more to register a pickup truck. I don't live in one of those. My registration did not go up when I uh, did not go down. I should say when I switched to the Bolt from my F one hundred and fifty, it stayed the same until this year, where Texas is charging me an extra two hundred dollars. Now, a good chunk of that is to recoup uh, fuel tax, which I don't have a problem with, but it should be less than two hundred dollars if it was just fuel tax. The extra is based on arguments from the legislators that passed it because of the EVs weights which again are not that, uh, not that much more substantial. Is it possible that an extra three to 700 pounds per vehicle uh, could cause a little bit of damage? Sure, but it's not gonna be massive. And yes, it's true that the Hummer EV weighs in at 9,063 pounds. That vehicle is massive, but it's also a Hummer. Not every EV on the road is a Hummer EV. Not every ICE vehicle is a Hummer, but uh, those things are big. It doesn't matter which way you look at it. What really damages roads is weather, rain, ice, snow, and extremely heavy vehicles, such as a 40-ton or 20-ton 18-wheeler carrying a commercial load. And several roads have high volumes of those on them, and several roads don't allow those commercial vehicles on them for that reason. But contrary to the myth, electric vehicles can actually be gentler on the roads than in their internal combustion engine counterparts. Why? Well, electric vehicles rely on regenerative braking. Even our Fiat 500e, which does not have a one-pedal drive setting, still has its factory original brake pads that show very little wear. Because of the regenerative braking that actually uses the electric motors to help slow the car down, the friction brakes don't get used that much. The friction brakes are where the brake pads come in contact with the brake rotor. Well, when that happens, when brake pads come in contact with the rotor, some of the material of the brake pads flakes off in the form of brake dust. Brake dust can be corrosive. If you don't believe me, look at how much, how many wheel cleaners out there on the market at your local auto parts store say they can remove brake dust. Uh, brake dust can corrode and it can cause corrosion onto the pavement just from the simple friction of those little microscopic particles being ground in by millions of cars driving over that same roadway. But the biggest thing where EVs are gentler on the roads is due to their lack of emissions. Emissions from internal combustion engine vehicles contain different things besides carbon dioxide. They also contain nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Those microscopic particles of nitrogen dioxide and sulfur dioxide will come to rest on the road and they won't be, you know, massive. We're talking just itty bitty ones, but millions of cars going over the roadway, it adds up. Well, when nitrogen dioxide comes in contact with water, it becomes nitric acid. When sulfur dioxide comes in contact with water, it becomes sulfuric acid. That becomes corrosive and it can eat away at the roadways over time, specifically having a negative effect on concrete and steel and what are bridges made out of. Also, an electric vehicle isn't going to drop oil on the, on the roadway because it doesn't use oil. It's not going to drop transmission fluid because it doesn't drop transmission fluid. Those uh, fluids can also cause damage on the roadway. So for the concern of whether our roadway infrastructure can handle all the weight of all those extra EVs, right now, looks like they'll be able to handle it just fine. If you enjoyed this video, found it mildly entertaining, uh, give us a like and please subscribe for more content like this. Thank you very much for watching.